So today we're going to talk about a very, very, very great compound that many people are, are talking about, and this is ashwagandha. A lot of people are talking about ashwagandha because they say that it's good for everything. They say that it's good for stress, for memory, for menopause, for muscle cramps, for sleeping, for everything. And a lot of people are taking ashwagandha and they go in Amazon and they go looking for their ashwagandha. And they start taking it without even stopping for a moment and seeing what's the data and what does the paper say about ashwagandha and which are those benefits that we really can look forward whenever we start taking ashwagandha as a supplement. So let's start and let's see which are those benefits and let's go deeper afterwards and see which are the nutrients or which are the compounds that when we go and see ashwagandha that are very specific that are good for our health. So let's get started. The first thing, most of the people take ashwagandha for the reduction of stress. Ashwagandha helps in a part of the body inside of the mitochondria for something that is called heat shock proteins. Heat shock proteins make part of the, of the cell and part of the mitochondria and that responds to stress. It makes it like easier for the cell to respond to that. I'm not gonna go deeper into biochemistry. I'm just gonna, I, I just wanna point it out and just try to make it easy. So when you have these proteins, someone that comes and make them work in a more balanced way, it's going to help the effect in which cortisol affects the cell when you have a lot of cortisol or when cortisol and adrenaline are present all the time in the body. Cortisol is not bad by itself. And we need to have that out of our mind because some people think that cortisol is bad. No, cortisol is not bad. When you have a lot of cortisol or when you have cortisol all the time or when you have cortisol and adrenaline, which is what usually happens all the time in your system because we're chronically stressed, that's where the, the, where the problem begins. Also, ashwagandha has been shown to be good for the mood. Some authors say that ashwagandha might aim or might be used as an antidepressant or as a natural compound for depression. And this is something that you can see in a lot of patients, especially when it's attached to depression, that it's together with chronic stress. When someone has a lot of work, they travel a lot, they have a boss that it's horrible, they are going into a very bad relationship or something that it's very, very, very stressful. Those stress, when builds up in the body when you're not sleeping, when you're uh, tired all the time, when you don't recover, then that kind of stress is the one that it's related with the use of ashwagandha and it's related with depression and with mood swings. Ashwagandha has also been shown for the cognitive function and also for concentration as a, something called nootropics. Nootropic is a, another chapter and maybe we can make a video on nootropics, which are compounds that are good for concentration, for studying. But this has been shown to enhance cognition and this is something, again, related, especially when someone that has stress cannot concentrate well. So because they're thinking a lot of things or their mind is just going very fast, it helps reduce that effect so you can concentrate and you have better cognitive function. It also has been shown to have anti-inflammatory properties and also an immune function. If I'm chronically not sleeping, if I'm chronically all the time thinking on my boss, on my work, on the, all the things that I have to do for tomorrow and everything. And I'm just not recovering well because I'm all the time with a lot of cortisol and adrenaline. My immune system doesn't work well. Chronic stress is one of the things that lowers more in the immune system and affects it more. It's not that by taking ashwagandha, then you're gonna have your immune system is gonna be just wonderful by itself. No, it's just that ashwagandha helps your immune system recover because you're lowering the effect of all the stress and all the cortisol that you're bringing into your system. It has also been shown to have antioxidant properties and there are studies showing that also it helps for the cardiovascular system. Again, the same thing when I'm chronically with a lot of stress, when my blood pressure is up, when my heart rate is up, when I have a lot of adrenaline, when even when resting, just because I'm stressed, just because I have mental stress or physical stress or chemical stress, which are the three types of stress that we have in our body, most of the people have all three combined together. So when we have this, this is something that we need to remember because our system, our cardiovascular system, our cerebrovascular system is going to be affected. Two other things that are very useful with ashwagandha that I want to point out. I'm not going for the for the most to the least. No, 
all are important. So one of them is for hormone regulation, especially for men and also for women. But there have been studies showing that ashwagandha could be beneficial for the production of testosterone. Let's remember that men have testosterone, but women too. Testosterone is very, very important, not only for muscles, not only for look being, for having good looks. No, it's also for mental health, for bone health, for cardiovascular protection. So testosterone is very necessary for both men and women. Ashwagandha helps. It can help with other compounds or some, some other adaptogens, which is the term that most people use for ashwagandha, or it's like the kind of category where, where people put ashwagandha. It helps for the balance of some hormones, especially for steroid hormones, which is everything that comes from cholesterol, which are estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, aldosterone, cortisol, all those hormones, which are steroids, could be balanced in a sort of way in different parts by the effect or by the action of ashwagandha. And also ashwagandha when taken in a good dose and when taken properly, which I'm gonna tell you in a moment, could help some people to sleep. And I say some people. If you're chronically stressed, and please listen to me with this, it could be one out of two. You could be stressed all the time. Then you cannot sleep because you're stressed. So you take ashwagandha at night and maybe you can lower those levels of stress. Then if that lowers, then you're like, you feel relaxed and you go and you sleep. Good. But it could be also a chance that you take ashwagandha at night and you cannot sleep and you're going to be maybe a little bit more hyper and you're saying, but, but you've just said, and you said all the video that is going to release my stress. Yeah, but if it enhances your cognition, maybe you're not thinking on your boss or on your work. Maybe you're just thinking on that book that you really want to read and then you cannot sleep because your cognition and you're, you're like wanting to have more information. So my recommendation, if something like that happens to you and it's affecting your sleep, it's to take it in the morning. So when we go and check what's inside ashwagandha, what's inside this adaptogen, what's inside this herb that it's been so famous right now in these years, but it's been so famous for many years on Eastern medicine, India, China, Pakistan. So when we go and dig deeper, what can we find inside? So the first one is white daverin A. White daverin A, it's a kind of white denylide, which is this category that has anti-inflammatory, it has the anti-stress and the antioxidant effects. It is probably that key compound in all of the ashwagandha benefits. But also we're going to find white denylide A. White well, A has also anti-stress, anti-mood or anti-depression, anti-cognitive decline, and all the neuroprotective properties. It's the one that has the main property for the stress and for the anxiety reduction. Also, in little amounts, we're going to find choline that we've mentioned several times, the effect that choline has, especially in the reduction of stress especially for going and having a better repair. That's when you activate something in, your, in our body called the parasympathetic system. How are you going to find ashwagandha? Well, you're going to find it or as a powder, as a part of a, of a food that it's already powdered. For example, you go and get a protein or you get, a, get any preparation that comes in a powder. So they add ashwagandha into it so you can take some of its properties or you can take, I don't know, chocolate and it's chocolate with the ashwagandha. It's very common and very popular nowadays. So this is probably something that you might find. You might also see it in tablets or you might also see it in capsules as a supplement, which is the best dose that you can take ashwagandha. The best dose is to take somewhere in between 800 to 2000 milligrams per day. But this is something that I want you to go and talk to your physician because there's, by the fact that it's something natural, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have side effects. Now, when people take ashwagandha, what can you feel? Are you gonna feel just instantly? Is it gonna produce any sleep? No, not at all. 
No, no, you can take it in the morning, you can take it in the middle of the day, you can drive, you can perform any uh, work or anything that you want to do, go play soccer, go to the gym, anything. What can you feel? You can feel GI discomfort. You can feel your belly kind of upset. Some people feel nauseated. Some people feel like a pressure. It's not pain, it's not burn. They feel like a pressure. It's what you find on the books, what, what they describe as GI discomfort. And you're like, discomfort? What's that? Well, when you take it, you're gonna know. What's my recommendation? Take it with coffee in the morning or take it with a meal. And of course, if you're taking a medication, go and check if ashwagandha has any interaction with this medication, with this specific medication that you're taking. So guys, yeah. Adaptogens are something that are great, are something that are also a big boom and a big business and people are talking a lot. And sometimes people think that, uh, that adaptogens are going to fix anything because they're going to make your body adapt to anything and to everything and they're going to make everything perfect. And no, is there evidence when you go and check? Are there clinical trials? Are there meta-analysis or stuff like that? Yeah, of course, there are a bunch. You can go and check. This is one of those supplements that are that is really backed by science. You can start getting these things. It's like when you get a Christmas tree. The tree is your habits. And then the ornaments are just those other things that you bring that it could be a supplement, it could be something else. But the most important thing is the tree not the ornaments. So please, if you think that this video is important, please remember to share it with your friends. It's the best way in which you can support us. And please remember before you leave to hit the like button that helps us so more people can find this content. And also remember to subscribe to the channel and also click the bell. So every time we make new videos, you're gonna be the first one to be notified. Thank you so much, until next time. Why phenolites? 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 Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Perdón, muchachos. Porque yo ya estaba grabando. <laughs>